They say, hey, we now also have the option of Rakan unless you ban it. No, but they won't do Rakan, will they? Because there's I mean, no need to. Expectation is Zillion, right? So there's the Ophelios Gragas locked in for Origin. Oh, so we're going, we're yeah. going full OG right now. Oh. This is the most OG rotation that you could possibly get. The Gragas has not been a high priority for them so far this series, but now it's finally coming through. This was the champion that Xerse was making waves on at the very beginning of the LEC. He was one of the first big Gragas advocates at the beginning of the split. And of course, Ophelios, while his laning phase has been made weaker on the most recent patch, He's still a very strong AD carrier that many pros around the world still consider solid. But of course, this then gives Self made the option to counter with the Olaf himself. Now, the big difference between Fnatic and OG this series is how Fnatic have been drafting their laners and how they set up to be able to allow you to make plays in those lanes. So you would imagine that Fnatic is going to prioritize having lanes that can actually allow you to set up these kills, or at the very least guarantee you prio to then allow you to roam and then look for kills elsewhere on the map. Definitely a lot of options for Fnatic. The uh, Gangplank will be locked in early on here. Let's see if Origin decide to pick their top lane. We obviously expect that to be Gangplank going over to Whippo in the top. Origin I think it's going to be Nautilus. I think it will be Nautilus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nautilus because, mid? I mean, if we're, if we're... No, they can flex it, but I just think that Nautilus is something that OG would typically go here, and I know that it's a comfort for Destiny, and I think that... Why would you go anything else outside of trying to... Okay, I mean... This is not the worst pick in the world. I think it achieves a very similar thing to what um, Nautilus does. And I think that it fills a similar role as well. It gives you a strong two versus two. It provides that extra bit of safety thanks to the lantern that a Nautilus typically doesn't provide. And now Origin are finally going to ban away the Senna. I think this is very smart. It's yeah. Zillion, got that. That duo specifically, <laughs> I think is what's been causing a lot of problems for Origin. And it's not about the laning phase, it's about when you transition into the mid game where this, this duo becomes a really big problem. I think that Zillion offers so much in terms of utility, especially for champions like Olaf, that you can't afford to allow it through. So I think finally seeing a band makes sense. I imagine OG would consider something like a Tom Kench ban, um, because I think that when paired up with the Senate, it obviously provides that additional safety, and it can be obnoxious to play against if you're running a Thresh. So I think that we're seeing a good adaptation from o Origin as we move into the second half. But my expectation is here, Fnatic just say, okay, well, you picked your support, you haven't banned Nautilus. We just won Senna Nautilus or Senna Galio in the bottom lane, and it's just, it's just as strong, like, yes, you don't have the power of the chrono shift and you don't have the time warp for the speed ups, but they still do very, very good things. And if you pick Galio, it facilitates the Olaf even more because he runs in and then you just Galio ult him and get all that extra CC down. Oh, so do have first pick on the second rotation though. I think Fnatic is looking at a Zoe right now. Um, I think Vlad ban was two away Delphari picking it into the GPD in the top side. And usually when you ban Trist, it's because you want to avoid that all-in power that Tristana often offers. And that usually suggests a Zoe. But of course, Zoe is something that also gives you a very strong mid-jungle duo when paired up with the Olaf. So that's kind of where my brain is thinking right now in terms of blind mid lane picks. She's also one of the safer options. And I think that under the assumption that Maokai ends up going mid lane, which I don't think it will, I think it's going to be sent into the GP. But in the uh, in the mid lane, I think that Zoe would also be fine into that matchup. So that's kind of like where my head is at. It looks like they might disagree with you slightly. because I mean, this is fine. Like Azir, Azir, I think, yeah. is also a very similar... Like, obviously, what Azir does, as opposed to a Zoe, I think is um, different. But the logic still applies, right? Where Tristana is a champion that they want to avoid. When they have to blind pick a mid laner, they want to go for something a little bit more scaling. My big issue here is that you're picking uh, e, an Azir with an Olaf, which I think, kind of, they want to do two different things. And I'm surprised, because... When you look at a champion like Olaf, usually you want to play lane around lanes that have either good setup or allow you to move. And Azir can get early prio. It's something that he can be very effective at. And same for the Gangplank. So I suppose in terms of the early game, it's not the worst thing in the world for Fnatic. But I don't think they have the easiest lane gank setups with their current uh, laners. Yeah, I can see I can see that, Berlioz. I think the Kiana pick. Finally here for Nuke Duck is a, is a very strong pick as well. Can give you very, like great roaming potential. Really good at getting into other lanes and helping facilitate ganks, especially with something like a Thresh that can pull you in from long range. We'll have to see how Origin are able to navigate this final game. Of course, uh, this third game. I keep saying final game. This third game. Of course, we will like. there is a very real possibility this is our final game. Fnatic have looked absolutely...
absolutely devastating, absolutely dominant in the first two, and it would be a massive shift here for Origin to come back because the games haven't been close. Like, up until 20 minutes, perhaps they've been close. But after that, it's a 9,000, 10,000 gold leads for Fnatic. Fnatic only died four times in the last game. In the first game, they only died once. Hillisang has yet to die. Like, this is... This is not what we expected coming into this series. This has been a one-sided demolition. And Origin really have to step up to the plate right now because otherwise things are only going downhill and we'll be seeing them in the loser's bracket next week. Yeah, I, I think it's been quite an interesting situation for Origin and the fact that they, ha they finished in seventh last split, they finished top three this split. Expectations were that while they might just be outside the top two, they should be a good contender. And so far, they haven't been able to contend against the likes of Fnatic. So this is the last opportunity, Medic. Let's see if they can do it. And on to Summoner's Rift we go. Last chance saloon here for Origin. Uh, we didn't really break down their composition too much as we were in draft. We were kind of pontificating on, you know, how the Trundle would work, how Fnatic's comp would work together. What are your thoughts about Origin here, Vedia? Well, a couple of interesting things. Number one, Fnatic definitely have priority in both top and mid lane at very early levels. Uh, melee into range matchup in the mid lane is obviously going to be very difficult to deal with. And look at that. Hail of Blades on Nemesis as well. So he's going to have very quick harassment tools every time the Kiana tries to walk up to the lane. Of course, the reason why you would pick Kiana in this sort of matchup is, number one, it offers a huge amount of team fight power. Number two, it works very well at finding assassinations. And you can see the origin is shifting up their approach in this game. Predator sitting on the Kiana as well. The goal for Nuke Duck is to not sit in mid lane. His goal is to roam around the map and it's going to be difficult for an Azir to follow. What you'll see is Nuke Duck will fall behind and farm in the mid lane because he's going to sacrifice waves in order to look for plays. They're going to try and set up dive spot. They're going to try and set up dives top. The goal will be to try and snowball this time around because when you look at some of the late game power that Fnatic does have with the long range of things like the Azir and the Senna, it's going to be difficult for Origin to approach. So they're putting a lot of weight onto trying to snowball for these early fights and early plays. Early on, Alfai will be pushed out of the lane, but this Maokai, we've discussed this a couple of times on Cast Vedius, when you get towards your Barmy Cinder, towards your uh, upgraded Sunfire Cape, you actually can win out traits in, yeah. in most of these positions. Like, Immolate passive is actually so powerful, and you have your Sap Magic to heal up as well, that it becomes quite difficult for the Gangplank to lane 1v1 into you. Yeah, I think that uh, the Gangplank will scale quite well into GP, but when you pick a Gangplank, you've got to bear in mind that your purpose is to set up for something, and that's why I quite like it when paired up with an Ophelia specifically, because it provides oh, okay. peel. When you pick a Maokai, right? Yes, when you pick Maokai. Yeah, okay, just make um, sure you said gang. When you, when you pick a Maokai, his purpose is to set up for other champions. So I really like it when paired up with an Aphelios because I think that it it's the perfect champion that you can basically give the freedom to allow him to just free hit whoever he wants. You have so much crowd control with the ultimate from the Maokai and the twisted advance on his W as well that it provides more than enough peel to keep this low mobility AD carry out of arm's reach and ultimately safe. The big thing he's going to have to be afraid of is this Trundle and Olaf that are going to be running towards his face. And I'm curious as to how OG will find a way around dealing with that. And I think that one of the most important things is that they don't give early kills and early pressure over to this Olaf who's already power farmed through his entire jungle. Yeah, already at 22 CS. Both of the junglers started without leashes. Uh, Self-made on the top side of the map, Zerse on his wolf. So Zerse will, you know, jungle slower on the Gragas. Olaf is one of the quickest clearers early on out of our meta junglers. And I wonder where Self-made will go, because there's always the option of looking for double, double crab in this sort of situation. But uh, sometimes you can put yourself in a bit of a sticky situation, especially if the enemy lanes have prior. I think that... Right now, Selfmade is just going to focus on securing Top Crab because his main goal will be to play around top side of the map. Um, you can see that big CS discrepancy is starting to build in mid. What does surprise me is that uh, Nemesis actually ended up pushing this wave back towards Nuketuck. I thought he had the wave in a pretty good state that would force Nuketuck to overextend, and that's really the position that he wants to be. But now Nemesis has the wave in. Sorry, Nuketuck has the wave in quite a comfortable position. But of course, Nemesis is going to very quickly unfreeze that with the range of his Sand Soldiers. Um, 
But yeah, he has to be very cautious, and I think that the Olaf, as we can see right now, are hovering around top side of the map. He wants to make things difficult for the Maokai, who's forced to overextend because of the wave state. And he wants to make sure that Nemesis is covered as well, because these are his two waves that he cares the most about. In the early game, Reckless and Hill saying like they have pretty much this entire series have been abandoned. The goal is not to play around them. Their goal is to just farm up, stay safe, scale up, because their value is going to come in the mid to late game, as they have shown multiple times throughout this series. So he's gone for a long path around here, but the saplings will spot him out, and that means Alfari is a little bit safer. You can see Selfmade was trying to avoid the vision from the Scuttle Crab and the wards in the river that uh, Origin Ooh, Look at bot lane, look at bot lane. Bot lane, there's a fight. Hook doesn't connect as Hillisang flashes away, but the exhaust is burnt as well. Hillisang gonna put down a good pillar of ice, but Zersi can just come straight back in here. Flashes forward, looking for Hillisang, the ignite is down. And Origin looking to strike first, first blood to them, first time in this series. They have picked up the first kill of the game. The wave was in a really good state for Origin, with it pushing towards the tower of Upset and Destiny that forced Reckless and Hillisang to overextend slightly. What surprised me was the fact that Hillisang tried to re-engage after Destiny missed his setup. That meant that Zerse could just come in for the re-engage because his flash was available, and they found themselves first blood. This is definitely a great start to a much needed uh, opportunity that Origin has been looking for in this series. So we can see here, Destiny setting up for the play. I don't think he invests his flash. He just walks up to Hillisang. He threatens the hook. He tries to land it as the root comes through from upset, which forces the flash out. And here we see the re-engage from Hillisang. Yeah. He's overstepping, looking for it, but Zerse is like, hello, I still have Predator. I'm still a Gragas. The flash E comes through, and then the combined crowd control of all three is enough for Origin to find the kill and as we said this is much needed for Origin because to have a good start like this considering how the series has gone is that uh, will provide a little bit of oh. release as they look for Reckless. No flash on Reckless does have the cleanse but immediately pulled back the pillar is down but Reckless is going to get taken out supreme display of talent and the stuns coming out on Selfmade he's looking for Xerxes trying to chase him but Nuketuck can put the damage in from the side. Xerxes brings the barrel down and Selfmade will fall you have to feel yeah, manages to get a double kill before he goes down in a 2v3. Selfmade turns it around Nuketuck will limp away back beneath his toe. But that was great play from Selfmade. The early game power of Olaf gets demonstrated right there. It looked like OG were half and half as to how much they wanted to commit to this play, but I think the collapse was good initially. Good roam from Destiny to lock down Reckless, forced to use the cleanse, and then they use the lantern. Look, Nuketuck was walking towards the lantern to try and secure it, but then it ends up being Xerse who takes it. So this kind of miscommunication here means the OG stutter, and they can't focus down Selfmade, who's life-stealing so low, even through the ignite, to find himself a double kill to end up turning this one around. So that brief moment of hesitation there from Origin, I think gave Fnatic the window to be able to actually turn that into a two for two trade overall. It looks like Xerxes might be setting up for something in the bottom. Oh, what? No, he has to take the Lantern, but Destiny now realizes he's not in a good shape at all. Self-made here, looking for another kill as the Pillow of Ice comes down, but on the this. chase, the hook coming out. Xerxes could go in, but Hillisang is very tanky already with a double Ruby Crystal. Here comes the Moonlight Vigil, and the Infernum burns straight through Fnatic. Self-made falls to the cask as well. Oh, incredible stuff from Origin after Fnatic once again overstep. Yeah, I was looking at that play and thinking, why are they hesitating? Like, this is definitely a one fight for Origin, crucially, because Upset's level 6, Medic. He's just been farming in this bot lane while Reckless and Hillisang just keep dying after dying. So he's just been free farming in this game. His ultimate was primed and ready. And then when the opportunity came, he struck and just melted through the duo of chase. So obviously this is a misplay here. Xerxes wanted to get over the wall, but then he steps back. Maybe because he realized self-made was there, but then he's waiting. He's waiting. He doesn't want to commit to the play there, but Upset just hits level 6 right now. And that was what they were waiting for. Fnatic to overstep. The heal comes through the ult ultimate comes through and then of course they have more than enough damage to turn this fight and the barrel just barely securing that last hit origin now with five kills on the board finally contesting Fnatic in this series and you have to think about how much of these plays comes down to the fact reckless and hillisang burnt flash because hillisang re-engaged after that bot lane fight like he, he burned his flash to get away that's fine then he goes back in, he dies because of it, and he causes Reckless to burn his flash. Those flashes still aren't up, and you can see Origin now have a two-kill Aphelios with a BF sword. You've got Swifties on your Thresh alongside double cloth armor. Like, Origin actually have such potential to snowball this game away from Fnatic because they are getting to these item spikes earlier, and they have the roam potential of something like Nuke Duck in the mid lane on this Kiana. Medic, the thing you got to remember about Hillisang is Hillisang giveth, but Hillisang also taketh away. It's a and, D2, uh, Betty. It's a D2. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think what's uh, 
I mean, it's part of the Hillisang playstyle. Like, again, I don't think... I think, yes, it was an initial mistake, but you have to give props to how Origin have been able to capitalize off the back of this. They're now securing the Rift Herald, which they'll use to secure first tower top. This is much more of what you expect. Of course, if they take this a little too slowly, they may not be able to secure this, but I like the Fnatic is trading on the bot side of the map as well. Finally, we're getting a competitive game between these two teams, as while it has been the Fnatic show for the majority of the series, Origin finally answering back. Now, let's see what they can do with the lead that they currently have. Should be able to take down this top tier one. The Rift is going to charge in, and they'll have about a 2,000 gold lead, 1,700 or so right now, uh, that they are ahead. You can see, wow. Okay, Upset has double Reckless's gold. Double right now. Well, just a little bit under double. We'll, but again, like you have to remember that that's not a fair cut. You kind of have to compare okay, it a little more. Double to the of Hillisang's gold. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. And the, the, the great thing for Origin about this is that they wanted to use Nuke Duck to make all these plays happen, but they haven't needed to because it's just been punish after punish and Fnatic have been the one trying to force a lot of these plays where Origin have then been in a position to counter. Now we get to see Nuke Duck roaming around the map as things start to open up a little bit more because Origin have kept that bot tier one alive. I want to see Nuke Duck now roam down with the fact that he has his ultimate, he has level nine, he has the Predator boots and they can look to try and make a play. Keep punishing Reckless and Hillisang. Keep funneling gold into your carries because this is what you need to try and keep an advantage over this Fnatic squad who I do still think have very strong scale. Well, they definitely do, but we've seen Origin with scaling in the last couple of games, although it was matched by Fnatic and we never got to the late game. We are always, you know, done by the 27 minute mark here. Upset building up towards his Essence Reaver first. Nuked up going on his way towards what I assume will be a Dusk Glaive, but could be an Umbral Glaive, of course. Uh, the Kiana has some flexibility with those lethality items, and we have seen Vision really dictate the pace of games in the last couple of games. If you get ahead, you get that Vision denial, you can really shut down Fnatic from being able to step up to the next Dragon, or go towards the next Rift Herald, and I, I'd love to see Origin really playing that style of game and actually trying to keep the tempo of this game a little fast-paced, a little, you know, keep Fnatic on the back foot for most of it. I mean, I just want to see Nuke Duck get out of this mid lane. I want to see him start roaming around the map a lot more. And I think that the goal for Origin should be to put Upset and Destiny now in the uh, the mid lane, try and generate more pressure there. But I also acknowledge that Nuke Duck this early on into the game probably doesn't feel that strong playing up against the likes of a Whippo. Uh, and he definitely can't play into a two versus two. So that's probably why they want to keep him in the mid lane for now. And then moving Destiny and Upset around the map. Of course, um, not entirely sure when the next Drake is going to be spawning. It should we expect it to be soon, given the amount of investment that's being invested around the investment is being invested uh the amount of investment <laughs> that there is in the bot side river and now we can get some more information so two and a half minutes until the next rate so still a little bit off so for the time being it looks like origin is going to prioritize on farming and to be fair that, that that is typically what they like to do when they have an advantage they use it to control the map rather than to try and snowball and then they get to a point where they feel comfortable enough to really start forcing the plays uh, but now we see the the maokai actually starting to dominate and win in this one versus one yeah, in a really good position. Two CS down ups. That's going to pop the explosive cast. Dawning Shadow coming out as well, but only used for the shield. The cannon barrage is used, but Nuketuck is on the chase, and really there's nowhere to go here for self made. He thought he was in a 1v1, but Origin were quick to pull the trigger and react. Nuketuck did invest his flash and ignite for that kill, which I think was a little overkill, personally. I think if he just thrown out the ultimate, he would have been fine. But regardless, Origin do find themselves another kill. That goes into the back pocket of Xerxes, who's now sitting at 2, 1, and 4. He's been involved in 100% of Origin's kills, and this is the kind of game that they need as Hillisang. Ooh, Ooh now going into a 2 2 Exhaust onto Upset. Moonlight Vigil has been used. Hillisang trying to trade with the subjugate, but he's going to get hooked up, and Upset is going to eat him for dinner. Destiny takes the killer in the end. But this Origin bot lane is miles ahead, and now here comes Nuketuck down towards the bottom side. Hasn't used his ultimate, didn't expend it in the previous play, and he's looking for Reckless. He's hungry for blood. Self made and Reckless, though, gonna court him out. There is the good last ult. embrace, a great ult, but no follow up from Origin. They didn't want to dive behind enemy lines, especially with Nemesis on his way across. And for the moment, Origin will just disengage, but they continue to funnel resources onto Upset. That is the seventh or eighth plate that he is gonna try and pick up in that bottom lane. Medic. 
Hellasan giveth, and Hellasan taketh away. He does. You know, he was all about keeping everyone alive in his first two games. Now, the opposite is true. He has to compensate for all of the lives that he saved in the first two games uh, by giving his life over to Origin. As, um, I, when we get the replay, we can understand a little bit more as to why that play came about. But initially, it just looked like he was trying to force a two versus two that I think that the Fnatic bot lane was too weak to win. Of course, Trundle is an exceptional duelist because of the amount of uh, damage that he can mitigate with things like his Q. Of course, he also has the W for all the bonus stats that he gets. But let's have a look at the map state. It looks like that Nemesis is roaming down, but of course the Kiana is following. It looks like he just wants to try and interrupt upset. Then he commits to the play after seeing Destiny fail the play. He thinks that he can actually win this two versus two, but the box actually stops Reckless from getting anywhere closer. And now the action is continuing as Hillasang, he does that flash. He is taking a lot away in this game. There's not much Hillasang giveth apart from kills to the enemy team. A good flash away. Upset looking for the final auto attack and will land it. And a kill in the top lane. Fnatic have been able to answer somewhere on the map. But they're going to lose a dragon for this. There's no Rift Howard for them to take. And they're going to lose their bot tier one. So overall, this should end up in favor of Origin, and they just keep punishing Hillasang. He was isolated in the bot side of the map, Reckless just abandoning him, and now Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck looking for the fight, Reckless lands the last breath, the Dawn and Shadow coming out as well. We're going to try and trade into onto this. Nuke Duck doesn't have supreme display of talent, but the Predator the boots predator. are on. Not going to go for it, not going to go for it. Upset oh, gets this, more though. damage on a turret. This is like Origin are pushing this pace of this game, Betty. This feels like... The way that Fnatic were playing in the first couple of games, the tower doesn't quite fall, but Xerxes and Destiny and Upset are all on this bottom side of the map. Nemesis is there. The Lantern's so safe for Upset. He can get a couple of extra auto attacks in, knowing that if Nemesis dives in, he always has that Lantern to get away. So a lot of things just happened there. Uh, let's jump into the replay and see exactly what happened to Alfari in his little skirmish. He's like, oh, Whipple, you've overextended. Look at all these minions that you're sitting inside. I want to go for this one versus one. Alfari does have the flash, but he's still holding on to it. Um, when Selfmade comes out, he actually can't chase onto Whippo anymore, and Whippo's just keeping her arms like, Afari almost ends up killing Selfmade, but he knows that the lifesteal from this guy is going to be too much. Like, wow. Okay, so an exhaust comes through as well. Alfari's Maokai is like, I'll take you all on. <laughs> and it takes four members of Fnatic to actually drop him there. But I think that if Alfari had just committed the flash a little bit earlier, he could have looked for a kill onto Whippo, but he wanted to hold onto it until a little too long. He does end up committing it, but Selfmade is the same. But the thing about that play is that Nuketuk then went top lane, found Reckless and Whippo, and because Whippo didn't have enough mana, he couldn't actually trade against Nuketuk. So if Nuketuk had his ult, he would have found a solo kill onto Reckless. Reckless, but that forced a flash out from Reckless, so that's now not available in the upcoming fight. And that's important to recognize because Nuke Duck is going to be so important as the game progresses. Uh, I think Humanoid is one of the uh, better Keanu players that we have in our league, and something he does extremely well is look for flanks and find ways onto the back line to create as much chaos with his ultimate. And this is what Nuke Tech is going to have to try and emulate with his Keanu. His goal should be to find sneaky paths through the jungle, utilize his W to jump over walls, and just sit behind Fnatic, and then when they least expect it, throw that ultimate out, either separate Fnatic, which is get that big wombo combo, to then allow Origin to actually just collapse. And, you know, when we think about scaling, when we think about execution, I think Origins just comp is easier to play, right? Their team fight, their front to back is just straight up easier. They have so much utility, they have so much damage, they have so much scaling, and they can just play front to back. The biggest thing they have to be careful of is making sure the upset doesn't die, and as long as they control self-made, that shouldn't be a problem for them. So I think the position that Origin find themselves in right now is a great one as the game reaches the mid-game state. Hellasang here dealing with both Nuke Duck and Alfai in the bottom lane. I do just want to bring attention. We've looked over it a couple of times, but the gold in this game upset is astronomically ahead right now. 9,000 gold. He's almost three, he was two and a half thousand more than anyone else in the game. I think he's he, reckless plus Hellasang combined, almost, isn't he? Yeah, that would be 9,800 or so. Yeah. But yes, wow. basically, Betty. It's, he is so, so big. He has Essence Reaver and Runan's complete. He's getting funneled gold left, right, and center. Like, yes, Fnatic have a chance in this game, but you have to kill Upset at the start of the fight. And with the, the distraction, the disengage of uh, Gragas Ultimate with the Supreme Display of Talent with Nature's Grasp, it's going to be so hard for Fnatic actually to access this Aphelios on the back line. The same does take a fair amount of damage there. Nuketo uses traded, full oh, combo. Oh, yeah. Plus the ignite. Um, 
but of course the exhaust gets used from Hillisang, which I think mitigated a lot of the damage from Noob Duck. And this is something also important to recognize, double exhaust on the side of Fnatic. We haven't talked about it yet, but against Assassins, especially Burst ones, exhaust is extremely potent. And I think that the fact that Fnatic have two is heavily going to mitigate Nuke Duck. Not going to stop upset though. Uh, he's going to be nope. sitting behind his front line. He's going to be feeling very confident. And unless Nemesis is going to dive into the back line and be like, nope, you're exhausted. I think that it's something that Nemesis can easily play around. It's just going to make life a little bit harder for Nuke Duck because he's trying to dive in and threaten the carries of Fnatic. Next dragon up in a minute. I expect we'll see some action around it. Origin have vision, vision control of the river. Tower fell in the bottom lane as Fnatic took that down. But you can see Destiny's coming in here, cleaning out any wards that might be placed. Double control warden. Every zombie ward in the world. It's like a little zombie convention going on at that <laughs> bottom lane bush. Uh, but for the moment, Fnatic really don't have a way to step up and answer the pressure that Upset can put them under. And uh, Origin looking much more like the team we expected them to be in this game. Oh, 100% Medic, 100%. And I think the biggest difference was the shift in priority in the draft. Getting Xerse on his Gragas. Look at the difference. 2, 1, and 5 this game. He has been so influential. They're finally able to punish the Fnatic bot lane. And now they're setting up a dive onto Whippo. Can of Barrage used by Whippo. Ups is going to take the turret. Nuketuck just looking to distract as that power falls. I've been informed that Reckless hit 60 stacks. In game one, he was at 99 at this point in the game. So you can see how much denying that center is actually really costing. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hillisang was like, hey, I don't think the domain around here is frozen enough. I'm going to make <laughs> Baron Nasher a little bit icy for the moment. I really think so. Fnatic are actually baiting it. Oh, look, Xerse. Yeah, OK, he's not going to face check. He's going to use his uh, Q to check that one while the Drake goes down in favor of Origin. Fnatic are really trying to act this one out, aren't they? They're just, <laughs> they're just like, kind of like, wait, oh, no, they just could be doing code. this. I think they've they started have, it. They, I actually think no. they've started it. Yeah, they've they have. started it. Medic, they've started okay, it. This, this, this would be the most Fnatic thing in the history of the world. You've seen them try <laughs> and sneak 20-minute barons before, but doing it when you are 4,000 gold behind might not work. Hillisang farming between... You're not singed. You're not singed, Hillisang. You can't proxy farm like this. He'll fall. Um, like, there's distracting the enemy that, that team. That makes and even then less that. sense because his team had literally started Baron. So, Origin were already on the top side of the map. Maybe his goal was to distract. You know? Yeah, he's like, he, oh, oh, guys, 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 I'm tasty. I've only yeah, died four yeah, times exactly. this game. Let's, let's e round that out to five. I think that could have been the goal there. But in any case, he gives away another kill. Um, <laughs> OG just continuing to get stronger. They're setting up for that potential Drake win condition. But no, they're, they're taking the game at their own pace now. They don't need to rush things. I think they're going to keep getting stronger as the game progresses. Um, you can see that Nuketuck has two items. You already alluded to it earlier. Upset with both the Runans and the SN3. But he's feeling very strong. Working towards the, what we expect to be the Infinity Edge. Next. OG is very strong. And yeah. this Olaf is going to offer less and less value as the game progresses. The Gragas is only going to offer more as he continues to get more AP in his back pocket. And... Uh, yeah, I feel like Fnatic have had very good drafts throughout, and I think this one has probably been the most questionable, just because while I think the lanes of top and mid did have priority, we didn't really see self made invading on the enemy jungle. His main goal was just farming in the early game, and then of course Fnatic, they can't account for getting ganked in the bot lane, but their execution was just a little bit off. Hillisang is definitely not having the best game of his career. Um... So I think a lot of these small pieces have kind of come together. And now when you look at Fnatic's late game insurance, a lot of the weight falls on Nemesis's shoulders because Reckless is extremely far behind in gold. And even though he is playing this fasting center, he's four levels behind upsets. So you can't account for Reckless to being your late game carry here all of the weight falls onto Nemesis. And I think that it's worth saying he has been, I think, one of the best performing players of Fnatic so far this series. His Yasuo in game one was fantastic. And then his Diana in game two again. So now the weight falls on his shoulders once oh. more to Selfmate take doesn't... Fnatic to a 3 0 if they're going to find a win. So I didn't realize he was on a ward because they thought they cleared it out. Supreme display of talent from Nuke Duck in the wrong direction. Yep. So it's just like, hey, do you just. Take a step back, please. Just push, just go back towards your base. But Origin here have done what they do best, which is good vi vision control around the Baron. You can see they've got deep wards in that blue side jungle. And uh, Fnatic really don't have any awareness of what's going on, and they're getting flanked right now. Reckless trying to come in from the side with Nemesis as well. Reckless going to use the cleanse to try and get away, but there comes the Twisted Advance. Last Embrace doesn't connect. Emperor's Divide used as well. And Origin will take that. That's a cleanse out of Reckless and an ultimate out of the Azir. Hillisang is split pushing which is what he's been doing all day, all game. He's just he's just trying to distract. All he's doing is saying, hey I guys, mean, you have to do something about this. Have you 
Have you ever played one of those games with a Trindamir that's like zero and yep. nine medic, and he doesn't stop going to a side lane? It's no that's... damage Hillisang. That's what. Yeah, that's it's the no damage Hillisang, man. <laughs> like he's he realizes that he's useless. He can't offer anything in team fights, so he may as well just sit in a side lane and force Origin to split up. And Fnatic are actually getting two towers on it. They might even break the inhibitor. Self made is looking for a steal. He does have flash medic. This would be the steal to end all steals. It's 3,000 HP on it. Whippo's coming down from the bottom side. Cannon Barrage has already been used. Nuke Dog jumps onto Nemesis, looking for the damage, but doesn't have the supreme display of talent up. Now, Alfari can still tank up the Baron for a while. Nemesis is the first target. He's going to fall, taken out by upset. And now the fight really begins because there's the double kill coming out. You can see Selfmade has fallen. Hillisang's going to take an inhibitor <laughs> tower, though. He's only got Tiamat for damage, but he's chomping his way through those stone buildings. They can't taste nice, but it's getting work done as Origin have to back up the Baron and come back to defend their base. I mean, okay, so the TPs are now coming through from Origin. They know that Hillisang is disengaged. The jungler is dead. They've got to clear out the vision to avoid Whipper potentially TPing in. And now they're going to start off this Baron. I think there's nothing that Fnatic can really do about it with Nemesis. Oh, we're both TPing in. We're both TPing into the base. Oh, he's going to backdoor. Okay, You're going to get an in-hit. Just get the yeah, in-hit. You might as well, right? It's yeah, there. exactly. It's the best case scenario for them. I think that... I don't actually know if he's going to have enough time, Yeah, though. I don't know. He's not the fastest. He hasn't got minions with him. He's going to try and clear out the minions. Two more autos. Two, one more. Okay, he does get it. The hook doesn't connect. We was going to try and run away, but I believe the chase is on, as they say. And Whipper will fall to Nuke Duck, who is now 3-0-3 on this Kiana. He's almost got his executioner's calling complete into the mortal reminder alongside the Umbral Glaive and the Dust Blade. He is putting out a huge amount of damage and there's a dragon on the card. So I, I like a lot what Hillisang did there. I think that just committing to the split push was the smart approach and it gave Fnatic the opportunity to, excuse me, to play through, um, or not play through, but give them some, alleviate some of the pressure, I think is the best way to freeze it. Now Alfari is sort of committed into playing into bot lane to keep catching these waves and keep pushing out the lanes. And OG will be forced to constantly catch these sideways that Fnatic keep making a nuisance when it comes to Fnatic. Notice how like they always send one member off to a side lane, they're relying a lot on Nemesis to act as the wave clear. And ultimately, I think this is going to make the game that much harder for Origin. And, you know, it's, it's the thing you can always say about G2 and Fnatic. They're teams that just make your life difficult. You know, it's like this game should on paper just be done. But they're just like, no, we're going to find really creative and obnoxious ways to make this game as awkward and annoying as possible until we find an opportunity to come back. And right now, Origin's still in full control. Upset is incredibly powerful and they will take down a tier 2, but there are all these waves that they have to manage, but now they finally have the map under control. Top wave is in a neutral state, they've got multiple oh, members grouped Destiny. up mid. now is Destiny in danger? Yeah, he's in a lot of danger here, Vedius. He's gonna go down, shut down by Bribo, but Nuke Dog with a supreme display of talent knocks the uh, stuns up 3. Hillisang's gonna try and chase, he's going for Upset with the exhaust down and the cannon barrage doing work. Upset is forced out of the back of the fight, but now... Origin could look for the re-engage. They're fighting Selfmade down towards the bottom side. He's got the Predators on. Xerxes looking for the chase here. Going to get a speedy Gragas to try and chase him down. Undertow used. But the, the smite with the Stalker's Blade will mean that Selfmade is slowed up for the moment. Alfari flashing in with a twisted advance. And Selfmade has no place to go. Uh, However... Right, Al Alfari looked a bit tilted there. Like, yeah, he's like, I'm flash. getting it. I'm just going <laughs> to kill him. <laughs> I do want to say, I... though, like, they only got a tier one. That's all, that's all Origin yeah. got out of that Baron push, and it's about to fall off in 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, like, th that wasn't a good fight for Origin, like, at all. So let's have a look at this. Destiny doesn't have Flash, he's just hovering on a ward. Uh, I don't know if he has a sweeper or a control ward, but that doesn't get cleared out, and Fnatic look for a fight. They find a pretty good kill, and then Nuke2, you can see, he comes in from the flank, but he actually doesn't have enough damage to one-shot either Whippo or Nemesis, so he's immediately forced to disengage. Hillisang, I talked about how the exhaust would probably never threaten upset. Hillisang trying to prove <laughs> me wrong there, as he hard commits onto upset to find that exhaust, which does keep him alive, but also keeps us out of the fight. And then we see this chase onto self-made as he has the cooldown of the axes, so he's just trying to kite them out. But now the fact that Alfari doesn't have that flash means that it's a lot harder for him to lock down that backline and allow Origin to set up that fight. But Origin, they're not slowing down. They're looking for the GP. Oh, he's going to gonna hold out. it. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> as soon as the Predator comes out, he's like, okay, I can't do much about this. He's going to try and trade onto Nuke Duck, but there is no escape for Whippo. Knocked back with the cast, heals up a little bit. But Nuke Duck in the end will take him down. All right, so Nuke Duck finds himself on a rampage. He will find three items in his inventory. Fourth one on the way. They're going to keep waiting. Oh, but he's in danger oh. now. Selfmade's chasing him down. Destiny with a lantern is there in time, and Nuke Duck might want to turn this one around. You can see Xerxes on the run, on the chase. 
Jumps in. Self-made. Tries to trade out at least one, but can't get it. However, Super Minions are pushing in this bot lane, so Fnatic actually win in terms of map state right here. Well, they've been able to get vision control over the top side of the map, but Nuke Duck gets even more gold. He hasn't completed his Edge of Night just yet, but he is now sitting at level 16, which means he has three points in his ultimate. That super minion is going to be killed, and I'm not quite sure when the inhibitors are going to respawn. So if you get the opportunity to pan over the bot inhib, we can have a look and see how much further away, because I imagine it's going to be very, very close when that respawns. Yeah, that's not too far off. I think you can tell by the Judge yeah, of the Crystal. Crazy. Yeah, and uh, then the ne the Baron is going to respawn as well. So with the Drake in a minute and a half, which is going to be the Dragon Soul, with the Baron in a minute and a half as well, OG are looking to set up for those objectives. Um, and with those in their back pocket, they could look to finally end the game. The big thing that they have to get through is Nemesis. He right now is the raid boss. He has all the wave clear. He has a death cap. He has the damage. And if they cannot deal with him, then he can clean up these fights. So it's Nemesis versus the world right now. And last game I was talking about, can he have a 1v9 Diana performance? I think he had a very good one for sure, but now he literally has to 1v5 Origin with the bodyguards of Fnatic as uh, he's looking to dish out the damage as a TP flank comes in from Origin. Alfari looking for that nature's grasp. Look at the speed on that tree. That's a tree end that's very angry. Goes in for Whippo. Hit with the last embrace. Slow down the nature's grasp. Doesn't connect and upset is pushed away here. Selfmade's on the wrong side of it. And look at where Hilasang is. He's still in the top lane. The super minions are pushing in. There's a super minion going towards the base of Fnatic of uh, Origin. And there's a kill coming out as Nuke Duck just can't win the trades. Nuke Duck will get taken out, but Hilasang is such a nuisance. Perk said it best. Perk said it best. He said, we might lose, but we make them sweat for it. And he said that when playing Fnatic last year in Spring Split, where it took Reckless and Hillasang backdooring the base to end the game. And Hillasang is showing just how much of a pest he can be. You want to swat him away like a mosquito, but he keeps coming back. He keeps coming back. And it actually look, makes it so hard for Origin to now. do anything. He's building Blade of the Ruin King as well. So his dueling is getting stronger and stronger. And Fnatic are now going to deny get the dragon. The dragon soul. Nuke Duck couldn't actually 1v1 self-made. And so again, Fnatic are finding ways back into this game. They're not making it easy for Origin. And this is the thing, right? Origin are a team that are very by the book. When they have a lead, they're very calculated. They're very smart about how they approach the game and they don't get over eager. But Fnatic take the rule book and they tear it up. They create situations that you can't prepare for and it so often catches Origin off guard. Now again, this doesn't mean that Origin aren't still in full control of this game. They are incredibly strong, but this game isn't as easy as it was, yeah. Medic. You can see Hiller saying, now level 15. The Toronto is level 15. <laughs> like, what is going on? And <laughs> He's I, just I, been... I, sorry, alongside that, like, Upset is full build now. Like, that, this is he the is, point of is, diminishing true, returns yeah, yeah. for Origin. Like, he is very, very powerful, but you have to do something with that power, because otherwise, Reckless has just hit 100 souls. He's going to get stronger as the game goes on, because he has pseudo-infinite scaling with the Absolution stacks. Nemesis still has two completed items to put in his inventory. Hiller sang still has two completed items to put in his inventory. <laughs> so unless oh, Origin actually keeps the pace up, they're looking for self-made, they're going for the fight, they will get him. And that is great for Origin, because still Nuke Duck is fighting down towards the bottom lane and keeping Hillasang at bay, and now they can start up Look the at the mid lane, two minutes, look at the mid lane. We'll see, because Fnatic are trying to pressure on two fronts, and Nuke Duck actually can't deal with Hillasang. You <laughs> can't do anything about it. It's like, okay, I can't do, I, I can't do, deal with you, mate. It, Hillasang is winning this trade, still has the subjugate. The wave will get cleared out afterwards, and Origin, Wait, and they were never able to start the Baron. Oh, but Whippo gets hooked. Upset doesn't take the Lancer, Upset doesn't take the Lancer, so he doesn't jump in. And maybe that was the right decision, because Nemesis was waiting around the corner. Now Upset's going to open up with the Inferno, but he's in the middle of the Cannon Barrage. Still has the GA if he goes down, and now Alfari, can you deal with Hillasang? Because <laughs> Hillasang's on a rampage. He practiced top in week 9, guys. You can't take him out like this. Hillasang beating Alfari right now in the 1v1. Nuke Duck's on his way. How many people do you have to send to deal with this living troll? <laughs> the irony of it he's like he's trolling origin so hard right now he's just like, like hillisang hillisang ran it down in the early game and now he's like all right i'm gonna make it up to my team and again it's like those trendomers in solo q medic how do you deal with them they just sit in a silent and it's a maokai the maokai is just gonna get shredded he's gonna kill him he's gonna kill off a bramble vest perhaps would help here origin gonna send everyone back to deal with hillisang and he's still chunking out alfari in the end hillisang will die but for look to start up the Baron. And remember, guys, oh, this is slow. match it's point. Slow. This is series point for Fnatic. If they win, they are through to our winner's bracket final and they will play against Mad Lions. But Origin have to do something about this. 
Wait, this is and really here fast comes, now. Here comes the explosive cast. Nemesis has joined the fray. Supreme display of Talon is in there, but already the Baron is gone. And now Fnatic have to get out. They have to get away from this. Nemesis is going to sneak off towards the top side, but Xerxes is still around if he wants to send his life to the fight. There's the slow on Nemesis. Nemesis will fall here. Upset just needs two auto attacks to take him out. Who has survived from Fnatic? That's the question you have to look at because Reckless and Bripper were still alive and they still have the Baron and there are super minions pushing on the Nexus of Origin. Medic. Hillisang giveth and Hillisang <laughs> taketh away and he helps Fnatic take away the Baron from Origin. Such fantastic play from We were critical. You know, we were criticizing. I mean, we were, we were justified in our criticism. I mean, of I'm... course we were. But now, like, look at what he's doing for his team. Who would have thought the split push trundle would keep the game even? The kills are 21 to 6 in favor of Origin. Yet Fnatic are able to find a Baron. They're able to stall out and this makes the game easier for Nemesis to be able to hold the line. Now again, the game is not done for Fnatic. This doesn't certainly mean they're back in it, but now they have a win condition. Now they can see that if they can just rely on this Trundle who's only getting stronger and stronger, you can say, what, is he walking towards a Trinity Force next? He better be. He like, better be. He is... He, you can see the Origin can't really match him in a side lane. Their comp is dedicated to that 5v5, and Fnatic are just avoiding oh, committing to it. They use Nemesis to poke <laughs> around team fights, so Origin's like, okay, we have to commit Flash to the split push now. Flash hook lands. Hillisang, you have to go down here. Upset takes the kill, and Hillisang was just a little bit too greedy, a little bit too deep as Whippo now looks to push in the top lane. Fnatic trying to answer in mid. They're looking for the tier one. There's a dragon in 40 seconds here, Bedius, but Fnatic are unrelenting. They're pushing in with the Baron buff, three members strong. Origin are going to try and answer. Nuke Dog, you can see he's positioned for the flank, he's positioned for the fight. He wants that supreme display of talent to land. He wants to land the knockup that keeps his squad in this series. Ragnarok used by Self Made. Nuke Dog dodging around as much as he can, and Self Made is chunked out. But with a good undertow, he manages to survive. The long range move shot is enough to take the kill as Upset goes legendary. 8 0 now on Aphelios. And Whippo and Nemesis aren't done yet. They have the Baron buff. They're going to push in top lane. The Sun Disc falls in the mid lane, but it's only Alfari here to deal with it right now. Upset on his way. Nemesis and Whippo might realize you can't really take this fight because Upset is so darn strong. The root's going to land. Alfari looking for the chase with the twisted advance. The moonshot. Moonlight vigil coming out as well, but Nemesis just about missed with the supreme display of talent. Destiny puts the lander behind him. He is slowed up, but Origin cannot chase any further. You have to feel they have to back away. Fnatic still pestering the base, still pushing in as best they can. There's a mountain Drake up and Xerxes doing it by himself. It's a 4v3 now as Origin look for the push. Fnatic retreating. Fnatic on the back foot. Curse of the Black Mist will get them out. And Destiny just clears out the vision, but this will be so point. Oh, Hillisang, if you... Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my heart was in my chest there for a minute. If he stole that, like, player of the series, player of the Flipping century. Mercy's <laughs> gonna try and catch out Hillisang as he pushes around. I, do you win these? Do you win these? Hillisang doesn't he wins have them any all, magic mate. He wins them all. He's the <laughs> so, all right. So the thing is, OG are finding kills, but Fnatic are just playing the map super well right now. They are just dividing and conquering. And oh, oh, oh! I oh, know. The problem is, Hillisang doesn't have any magic resist. Nuke's oh, looking to go across the wall. Supreme just like, oh my. Goodness gracious me, Hillisang's still alive! He's being ignited, but he's sticking away! He dodges! What was that, Hillisang? How on earth do you get out of that alive? That was of reckless. Course the reckless. Shadow he comes up clutch. His bot lane partner providing him with the shield from the ultimate was enough. And Nuke Tuck also messed up jumping over the wall. He was scrambling for a second there, thinking that he wouldn't be able to save his jungler, but the stopwatch comes out clutch to keep him alive. And now it's Fnatic that has full control over the top side jungle, but there's no Baron to play for right now. The big problem that Fnatic is going to have to deal with is that this Elder is going to be spawning soon, but Fnatic find themselves in a very similar position to what G2 were in yesterday when they played against Mad in Game 5. They can't win the 5v5. There's no way that they can do it, so when you go for these objectives, you don't fight to win them, you fight to stall. You're going to try and delay Origin as much as humanly possible to prevent them from getting back into base to allow someone, whether it be GP, whether it be Trundle, to split push and take down the Nexus from behind. If they're able to do it, they'll go 3-0, they'll move on to face Mad Lions next week. If they don't, this series is going to continue and Origin can look to bounce back. I'd love it if the observers just switch across towards the gold for a second because I'm wondering how far Xerse is away from finishing a Morello Nomicon. There isn't a huge amount of Grievous Wounds sitting on Origin right now and he's still a sizable sum away. That Trundle is being a nuisance because you, they only have one execution that's calling. It's sitting in the Mortal Reminder of Nuke Duck and yes, that's you true. have an Ignite on Nuke Duck but if Alfari is dealing with Trundle, you need a Bramble Vest. If it's Xerxes dealing with him, you need a Morello Nomicon because otherwise he just outheals you, he outsustains you with his King's Tribute, with his Lifesteal from the Blade of the Ruin King. 
and with his ultimate. So I mean, I, I personally think the only person that can one v one Trundle right now is actually um, upset. Maybe Zerse could do it, but. Honestly, I think that he's just too strong in the 1v1. And uh, I think that he's playing super well as well. Keanu has the flank. Whippo Keanu has is the flank. here. New Duck, you're going to go for it. Xerxes here as well. Whippo there, but there's the stun lock. And Hillisang taketh away from Fnatic as he falls. Hook almost connects on Whippo. There's a Baron in 39 seconds here. Bedius, and it's 50 before Hillisang yeah, returns yeah, yeah. to the rift. Look at the wave states right now, Medic. You, you look at now how Fnatic can't generate that same pressure. The Baron is now completely exposed, and it's going to be available before Hellasang respawns. The bot wave is pushing in Origin's favor. Alfari is now pushing top. They have control of the mid. This is the perfect map state for Origin to properly set up for the Baron. So Fnatic is going to be forced to try and contest, utilizing the poke of Nemesis to try and be obnoxious around this objective. Maybe go for a steal, but there's a two-level gap between the two junglers right now now so i think this is a guaranteed baron for origin they don't clear out the control ward they don't clear out the control ward uh it does they do look have a like sapling in there though yeah. so they're gonna they, know if a tp yeah. comes through it does look like Fnatic don't want to fight it instead they're getting cryo mid and then looking to get some vision control down towards this bottom side that top lane in a bot lane inhibitor has respawned and is alive still for origin so no extra push coming out hillisang once again split pushing but not as effectively right now and not anywhere near the origin base so baron goes down to origin 6,000 gold lead it's been about that for the last 15 minutes or so but now they have the baron on all five members they have an elder drake in two minutes if they want it and they can look to finally bring the sword to Fnatic. can we just can we just take a second to recognize that there have been 24 kills in this game and alfari has been involved in four of them <laughs> <laughs> Like, he has been forced to just catch waves on side pretty much the entire game. He what else like, would you right, have the all-pro top laner do? I'll, I will play Maokai if we get to team fight, And then Fnatic's like, nope. And then he's just <laughs> forced to deal with Trundle and Gangplank. And he's like, I didn't agree to this. We were supposed to team fight, man. <laughs> he's like, he's only been involved in four. Hopefully, he's going to find the team fights that he's looking for and Origin is looking for. As right now, with the Baron buff, with the Elder spawning in about a minute and a half, the problem that they're dealing with right now is Nemesis. This is wave clear. The poke is quite strong from upset, but he's going to run out of ammo on the sniper rifle, which is going to happen right now. So a lot of that poke is now going to disappear. And you're starting to see how the siege isn't the strongest when you do have that melee mid laner. They really need to split up this map by playing through multiple lanes. They do have the wave set up in bot, but they don't want to overcommit right now. It looks like that their focus is getting the Elder Drake. But the problem with Elder Drake is it doesn't help you siege. It just helps you fight. And that's been Origin's biggest problem this game, failing to find a successful 5v5. It does mean that if you get Hillasang low, though, he's much more likely to die. That is true. That is very true. You can see uh, Origin trying to set up a couple of waves. Hillasang is going to answer the top lane push. But there's no real mid wave yet for Origin pushing in. Destiny throws out a speculative hook. Doesn't quite connect. Elder, 40 seconds away. Upset, putting down the sentry, trying to add another man to their army as Origin push in. They're going to clear out this control ward. You can see no real Fnatic wow. vision. They've got one bit of vision just by their red buff and one which is controlled by so origins mid -la bot side there's mid -la that um there's that morello that you were looking for for zeus yep. his q just took about half of reckless's health off um so it's Upset. quite devastating turret does come up for nemesis but you can see this looks like a fight's gonna happen Hooks on a minion moonlight Ooh, vigil that's just big. whiffs and now perhaps We'll see Fnatic take the fight because they don't have that AoE route. There's the Infernum Crescendum sitting on upset. He's in the cannon barrage. Still has that GA. Alfari goes gold and moved up with a flank. He's trying to take out Selfmade, but Xerxes gets jumped on by Selfmade. Supreme display of talent used. Another hook lands onto Hillisang. Now it's upset. J opening up the big guns on Hillisang. That Ignite's going to tick and Destiny takes the kill. Xerxes flashes forward and the explosive cast finds its mark. And now upset can unleash hell. Reckless has nothing he can do. TP comes up towards the mid lane, up towards the top lane from Alfari as he rejoins the fight. Nemesis trying to get away, but. It's all done but the singing in this game. Nemesis clears out a wave, but there's not much he can do as Nukeduck snipes him out and Origin open up the base of Fnatic. And Origin finally find the team fight that they were looking for. It wasn't clean, but it did not matter. 29 kills to 6. This should have been a one-sided affair, but Fnatic made them work for it. Origin will stop Fnatic from securing this series in a clean sweep. They will find themselves a big win. Great performance from Origin to take us to 2 and 1. Vedius, we have a series on our hands. <laughs> as uh, Origin managed to get a win, not in the most decisive manner, but every win counts.
Yeah, I mean, props to Hillisang, right? Like, he had a weak early game, but he made up for it. He, he was so obnoxious to deal with, uh, but uh, they were able to stop him in the end, and a lot of the focus came from... Uh, trying to attack him just before the objectives were spawning, and then by taking him out, it made setting up for things like the Baron that much easier. So, huge props to Origin. They are able to bounce back, but you have to imagine now that Fnatic's game plan is going to change. No more Gragas for Zerse. That champion is too good in his hands. He had, like, I think 11 kills that game or something ridiculous. Um, definitely an impressive performance from him, and you can see what happens when you give Origin much more of their comfort picks. The Aphelios for Upset and the Gragas uh, for Zerse, I think, were big determining factors in helping Origin having a much stronger performance here in Game 3. Well, when we return, the experts will tell you exactly how Origin bounced back. 